Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Emily Campagno and Harris Faulkner. Also joining us, Lisa Booth and David Webb on this Monday afternoon. Now to our top story, Vice President Kamala Harris's controversial remarks suggesting Hurricane Ian relief efforts should be prioritized based on race. You heard me right. As people in Florida are reeling from the devastation with hundreds of thousands still without power, wondering how to get on to the next day, many don't even have usable drinking water. Many more don't even have a place to call home. But they tune in and listen to our vice president, who thought it was a good time to say this. Our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and and impacted by by issues that are not of their own making and, and so women. we absolutely and so we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity i could not believe when i heard this harris um when those floodwaters are rising when your home is destroyed when you potentially lose a family member, as some did. Yeah. The last thing you were thinking about is race. And at a time when America came together, perhaps one of the most unifying times in our country is after a natural disaster, when the whole country comes together, she chooses to invoke such hateful, divisive, race-based rhetoric. It's amazing. I tell you, first of all, I got a little bit of a lecture on the Faulkner Focus from Will Kane, who reminded me that this is about morality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he was baseline right. And that's why it's so offensive to us. Because on a very moral basis, you're going to want to help your fellow Americans, no matter what they look like. Um, I don't know how she lost that in her frontline focus. It's in the rearview mirror for her. But you know what, Kaylee? This was the first time that I really got a taste of what it would be like if she ran for president. Mm. And I thought, mm -hmm. maybe now she does think she's going to be running. Because what she's doing is she's following Biden's footsteps in terms of dividing us along a racial line for votes. Remember, if you are black, if you are black, you would vote for him. If you don't vote for him, you are not black. So if you want to help people of Florida, help the people of color first, you really have a heart. That's real compassion. That's what she's saying. Tacitly, that is what she's saying. Not that we're all the same and deserve love. That's, yeah. I, I guess that's what it would look like if Kamala Harris thought she could get the P instead of the VP. Right. <laughs> she had a chance yeah. to clean it up, David. Let's take a look to see if she did. Um, I'll give you a hint. She didn't. <laughs> oh. Mr. President, can you clarify what you meant about equity for hurricane relief? Mm. Hmm. Amazing. Unsurprising. You know, you said it was, you used the word moral. I would use the word amoral to describe this. Look, they're making a play. She obviously doesn't understand the geography of Florida very well. Yes, there are black people in Florida that she may want to play to, but in Fort Myers, in Collier County, from Naples going north, along the I-4 corridor in Orlando, are more middle of the road and right-leaning Americans. So she's politically ignorant. She's amoral, but this is also a bigger picture for them. The word equity, which is the new racist from the left yeah. is really what they're putting in here. And that's what Kamala Harris is doing. It's not about Floridians. She actually doesn't care. That's my thought on it. Her own actions, her own words, no different than her in California. She doesn't care as long as you're useful to move her forward. But on this one, if I were a political advisor, I'd say, boy, did you get the geography, the demographics, the, the, the economic situation completely wrong. My sister lives in Punta Gorda on the west coast of Florida. Now, she happens to be a black woman. She doesn't need the help. She's well prepared. She's had damage. Why would you give her something she doesn't need based on what you're saying? Because they need the votes. They're already losing. Well, she's not Hispanic getting my sister's votes. vote, that's for sure. They're already <laughs> losing Hispanic votes. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to pick up diverse lanes of votes. And make no mistake about it, they think that that will work for them. It's also the home of Governor DeSantis, who's handling this like a boss and might run for president. Hey, can I, can I draw a contrast on yeah. ideas here for a moment? I'm sorry, Lisa. Yeah. It's where I spent yesterday. I went where the GOP typically doesn't go. I was in a union hall in Texas 
in Arlington at the GMUAW 276, a majority black union of 6,000 members in that local. And when we talked about issues, when we talked about values, when we talked about what, is the, what matters to the community, what do you want? There was very little daylight between myself and my independent slash liberal counterpart on that stage, Dr. Wilmer Leon. And the members and the people I met, with rare exception, and it happened to be an NAACP official and a wannabe councilwoman who was running, she's the only one who got up and made a speech parroting, we'll tell you when to show up. But I'm just telling people, your power, Kamala Harris is telling them, you will get what we want for you and we'll tell you when you get it. Those people want to simply work and take Emily, care of the, themselves. Uh, this was struck down already uh, when they tried to administer farm relief based on race. It was struck down by the court, but they didn't learn their lesson. They don't care about the rule of law. They had the Criswell cleanup, and what I mean by that is the FEMA administrator who came out and was asked about this, she said, oh, well, I know the vice president, I know the president. They're gonna get help to all Floridians. We haven't heard from the president. We haven't heard from the vice president. Meanwhile, we have a court that has struck this down previously. That's right. This is serious. People have lost everything. They have lost their lives and their loved ones and their homes. And yet again, we have a vice president that comes out of left field with this knee-jerk talking point, this racially charged, unconstitutional talking point that only plays, she thinks, to the liberal left, to a certain demographic, a certain skin tone that she thinks should shove you into a box and automatically means how you should vote. Mm -hmm. We see this as a campaign trick. But what I need at this moment is a vice president who's a leader, who unifies instead of is divisive in this time. Because as an American, I care about all Americans, any Amen. American in distress. And I know I speak for all Americans when I say that. And yet she seems to only care about a certain skin color in, in distress based on an assumption. And meanwhile, wasting our tax dollars and resources because after that, FEMA had to play cleanup. Florida Disaster Management had to play cleanup. Crickets, meanwhile, of course, as you said, from the White House and from the vice president. And here's the other thing. You know, if she was talking to a real journalist, there would have been pushback. What do you mean? How do you implement that, and how is that legal? But instead, she was playing around with an actress. So she got applause, while the rest of us get a vice president who always misses the point. See, I don't believe it was a, a talking point or a political play. I, this is what she believes. Mm -hmm. This is what the Biden administration believes. They believe that FEMA aid should be given out based on race. And, and David nailed it when he said, look, equity is just another word for discrimination. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what this administration is endorsing. And then you, you paint this in contrast, you put this in contrast to the job that Governor DeSantis is doing, which Harris was speaking to. Look at the power issue alone. I mean, over almost 80% of Floridians who lost power have had it restored. By the end of the week, most of the people, if not all of the people who have lost power should have it restored. You go back to last year, I believe it was Ida, they were talking about power not being restored for three weeks in New Orleans. You look at Puerto Rico, with, which just got hit by Fiona, which was a one when it, when it hit down there. A, a week later, half of Puerto Ricans were without power. So that issue alone, and the reason why this is, was able to be accomplished by, the, um, by Governor DeSantis and his team is because he had those 42,000 linemen mm -hmm. lined yes. up, ready to get to work, who bravely went go. out to try to restore power in the areas that were hard hit. So that speaks to DeSantis' competency. And then you paint that in contrast with Harris and Biden, it's stark. There's yeah. no doubt there's a difference. Harris, I want to play a soundbite to you from the Sunday shows um, because it struck me as a moment um, where a journalist could have asked a question about this, but instead stopped Senator Scott right in his tracks and suggested Kamala never said this. So let's take a, a watch. Oh. Jeez. What we got to do is we got to bring everybody together. I would also say that what Vice President Harris said yesterday, that our day before yesterday, that you know if you, if you have a different skin color, you're going to get relief that's faster. Not what the, that does, that's, that's not, not what the Vice either. President so said. So I think what we got to do. That's not what the Vice President said. She talked about yeah, equity exactly and the problem meant. within FEMA. No, 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 wait, no, no, wait, 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 Margaret, Margaret, let's make sure. FEMA has to be colorblind. Mm -hmm. FEMA has to provide support to everybody. So that was Margaret Brennan, and um, it's her job to further the conversation then and say, well, why do you think that that's what the vice president meant? And then he could say what the words were, which he was trying to say, and then she could go on and have an interview. But she was defending the vice president. And if, if Margaret Brennan was not defending the vice president, then I would challenge her and say, well, what were you doing at that moment? Because we needed to hear from somebody from a state where nearly 80 people have died, because we lost some people in other areas as well. 
as it moved on up the Carolina coast, but Florida had the most death and destruction. Here we have a leader in that state, former governor of that state, and Margaret Brennan is going to shut him down rather than saying, that's not what she meant. Here are her words. Her team should have been ready to roll with it. We do that on The Focus all the time. Actually, you know what? Let's hear it together and then tell me what you think. But that's not what she does because it's part of the narrative of if we can just all be silent together, yeah. then there won't be recourse for what we're doing and saying. And I'm not impugning her as a journalist in that moment. I'm just saying as a human being, wouldn't you want the true words to happen if in fact it were going to divide the nation further by race? But the question you just asked is key. What does the journalist want? An honest person, yeah, journalist or tell. not, yeah. would ask the logical questions, even caught up in the moment. We've all been and caught up all in been the moment in, in something. We've all been there. You know, the Faulkner focus before this, you made a comment during the segment. Uh, this is about the commitment to America. While the Democrat was talking about the plans they have and that Republicans have none, you said, what about the plan? Why don't you read it? I'm paraphrasing. I'm quoting Harris to Harris. You're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> But the point is, be honest enough to look at both and yeah. say we can disagree, but <clears throat> let's look at it. They, the point here is to keep saying the same distraction, deflection, or yeah. outright lie over and over for the people who will believe it, because this is about elections, not about the people of Florida. So they true. didn't discuss, for example, that Duke Energy, Samaritan's Purse, American Humane, ah, all these private organizations were working with the state already. I had dinner with Manny Diaz, the uh, Speaker of the House. They were talking about this pre-hurricane, how they were prepping. Yeah, and I think that's exactly right. Have the soundbite ready to go. Let the vice president speak for mm -hmm. herself instead of characterizing. Yeah, you got to be able to call for that. Her team should have been more prepared. Yep, no doubt about it. And if you would like to join Fox in donating to the Hurricane Ian relief efforts, please visit redcross.org slash Fox Forward. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-host Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.